A very warm good morning to you. My name is Robin. I'm the ministry intern at St Mary's and I'm going to be doing our talk this morning in this lovely weather. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for gathering us here this morning. We thank you for your word which inspires and teaches us. Lord, be with us this morning. Be with me as I speak and be with our listeners. Bless them and inspire them. In Jesus' name, Amen. So this morning our readings were taken from uh, John chapter 14 and 1 Peter. Um, and I'm going to be concentrating on um, 1 Peter, especially this phrase um, that is used where Peter says that the early followers are being built into a spiritual house. I thought that this was such a beautiful, vivid and colourful um, image to use, that we are being built into a spiritual house. And this imagery is one that I wish to explore today. So, a little bit of context. Um, this book of First Peter, uh, it was commissioned by Peter, um, but it was actually written and put together um, by a fellow brother called Silas. Um, Silas was a very important ch early church leader as well, and he also follow followed St. Paul around on his missional journeys. Um, this book was written while in Rome, um, but its audience was actually for um, a more distant people. Um, it was written for the communities in the Roman province of Asia Minor, which today is around Turkey area. This letter is primarily written to really inspire and encourage the early followers of Jesus, mostly um, Gentiles, non-Jews, as they were being persecuted. Um, and this letter was really to assure them that although their physical circumstances may, may not have been favourable, um, much like us today in lockdown, despite this, that actually there was still such a strength within them. And I find this particularly encouraging that although we are stuck, although we do not have much of a, um, a plan and outlook of what is to come next, that there is still a strong spiritual house that we belong to as the children of Christ. Peter um, quotes a really um, powerful scripture from Isaiah, um, a prophecy looking at the Christ that is to come and how he would um, be in our lives. He says, as you have come to Jesus, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy offering. See, I lay a, a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. There is a really beautiful parallel that is highlighted through the scripture we find in Peter, um, and then this prophecy we see in Isaiah. Um, also in Corinthians, we are called um, a God's temple in which his spirit dwells within, a home within us that is strong and powerful. And then here in 1 Peter, we see that we are being further strengthened into the spiritual house. The prophecy from Isaiah, it calls Jesus this precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So here we just see foundation after foundation being strengthened. First of all, we have that person who believes, who has the spirit dwelling in them. Then we have this idea that we are being built into this house as we lean and as we rest on God. We are getting stronger and stronger. And if we couldn't do it on our own, which we are not called to do, we are called to rest on Jesus, who we know will never let us down. And he is that cornerstone that Isaiah prophesies. And although that was something that they were looking forward to in the Old Testament, we know that we live in that glory as modern day readers. We know that even though we may fail, we may feel scared or isolated or not so powerful, we know at the end of the day, it's not us that has that power. It's the power that lives in us because of this cornerstone, Jesus. 
I love um, the little links that you find in scripture. Um, and as I was reflecting on, on Peter and why he chooses to use this analogy of stone, um, we find um, earlier in the gospel when Jesus calls his first disciples that he renames uh, Simon Peter, Cephas, the rock. Um, so it's really interesting that, that Peter does choose to use this imagery of a house, of, of stone. Build your house on the rock, not on the sand. And Jesus is this, this stone that we build ourselves upon. And that must have been particularly pertinent to Peter, having been renamed, having, have, having had this new identity in Jesus. He is somewhat passing that onto us, saying, you too have this firm foundation. Peter is the rock in which Jesus said he would build his church upon. And that is that, that invitation is given to us. We too have this firm foundation. We too are leaning on this rock. Oh, the roses are coming to say hello. Peter was commissioned by Jesus uh, to lead his church and to help it flourish. This meant taking the message of Christ beyond Jerusalem, beyond Israel and to the rest of the world. Um, and to these early followers, there was this epicenter of religious life being in Jerusalem, being in Israel. But Peter here is telling us that no, God isn't con confined by um, these walls anymore. He no longer only dwells in the temple. Uh, he, he no longer owns to the, uh, is owned by the religious elite. No, God is everywhere. He is now within us. We see this fulfillment of Christ, the Saviour, now being all among us, building us up to be strong. This idea of a, of a house, of a, a spiritual house, but a physical house, can take such different shapes depending on our situation. Right now, the idea of being in a house, of being in lockdown, is uh, almost like a prison. It doesn't feel that liberating. <laughs> but despite our current situation being locked indoors, we cannot refute the phrase that there is no place like home because it's in the home now that we are taking refuge, that we are helping our nation not spread this virus anymore. In many ways, it is still a refuge. I'll never forget, actually, when I got completely lost. Um, I, was, I went to China to, as part of my degree um, to learn Chinese uh, in 2011 when I was 20, um, and I needed a bit more money. So I decided to get a part-time job teaching in a primary school. I got an interview, I got screened on the phone, and then they asked me to come in. And uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm a big girl now. I can go out and find myself a job. So I drew myself a map. Um, I didn't have a smartphone in those days, not even that long ago, but I didn't. I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go out, I'm going to write some phrases down, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that school. Um, the school was in an area called Zhongguantun, and it was about 45 minutes from where I lived. Um, so yeah, I got on the bus, um, ugh, but as soon as I got on, it was horrible. <laughs> it was too hot, it was 36 degrees, Beijing summers are a nightmare. Um, but not that, I can handle the heat. Everyone just looked at me, and I just felt so out of place. And all the questions I'd prepared in advance completely left my head, and I just couldn't ask for directions. So here I was, sitting on the bus, as the stops went by and by and by, and there were so many words in Chinese, I didn't know what was going on, and I just heard a word that I thought I recognised, so I got off the bus. Gosh. So I got off the bus, and yeah, I was in the middle of nowhere. It was a, a like a motorway, more or less. There were high-rise buildings, barely any pavement, and I just... My heart sank. I didn't know where on earth I was. It was horrible. So I was walking, walking, walking. I found this guard and I was like, yes, okay, I'm going to show him my address. As soon as I got to him, he just goes, boop, 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 which is no, 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 no. And I was like, no, please help me. I'm lost. And of course, he didn't understand this. I felt absolute despair. <laughs> I just sat on the pavement and I put my hands in my head and I just thought, God, God, help me, help me, I don't know where I'm going. 
And this same feeling of, of being lost, even in familiar places, is what many people are experiencing at the moment. You may be at home, but you feel complete despair. And God was a refuge for me at that moment. And even though we may be at home, God is a refuge for us now. He is with us. I love how the Psalms really capture um, this agony that people feel. King David completely burst open in front of God. He got down on his knees and he cried out. And God always says, I am your refuge. Come to me when you are in despair. Come to me when you have nowhere else to go and I will give you rest. When we earnestly approach God in prayer, like how we learn in the Psalms, he will meet us. Be rest assured that despite our physical circumstances, that Jesus is this immovable rock that we are being built up upon and that within us is a spiritual house that we may not be able to physically touch each other right now, but we know as Christians, we are in this house that is being built. As St. Paul calls us, the body of Christ, all having different parts. So it's not the physicality, although it's beautiful to join together in physicality. There is a spiritual house that we do all belong to, and that rests upon the cornerstone. The cornerstone being that, that prized part of a building that traditionally would hold the whole thing together and it would have that title of who it belongs to and when it was built. Jesus is that cornerstone and we belong to that house and we will never be lost with him. You'll be glad to know that I did get home two hours, well, I got to the interview two hours late. Oh, I found a lady and I, she spoke a bit of English. I gave her my phone um, and she called the school and I got there. And crazily, I got the job. So, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Let us end with Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be my rock, my fortress. Oh, save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we lift ourselves into your presence this moment. We know that you are the rock. You are the cornerstone. I particularly pray for those who are feeling lost at this time, who are feeling despair. Lord, come into our lives. Lift us out of that place and let us know our true identity, which is with you on a firm foundation and we will never be put to shame. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>